Hello everyone, today I'm going to share with you a scale-based curriculum that is going to help you to improve your technique dramatically. If you're a high school player, it's going to help you to ace all of your technical exams if you're a college student, as well as increase your chances of successfully winning a job audition post-graduation. In this video, I'm going to share with you five reasons why the materials covered in this book are going to be essential for your development as a brass player. I'm going to explain the differences between direct and indirect ways of learning. I'm going to share with you a minimum curriculum requirements as well as give you a 24 week uh, preparation plan, which is going to optimize your learning process. The book and all the materials used in this video is going to be available for download in PDF and XML formats on my Patreon page. So go check it out. And and, um, consider subscribing for as little as three dollars a month uh, and you'll get uh, access to all the downloads used in my educational videos you could also do me a huge favor by liking this video sharing it with your friends leaving a comment down below as well as subscribing and hitting that notification bell for all the latest news and updates with that out of the way let's talk about five reasons why learning a great scale curriculum is essential for any brass player Number one, it makes you a teachable player. Now, what do I mean by that? Oftentimes, especially with my new students, whenever we have one-on-one -on -one lessons, I get them to play something for me so I could see um, the technical areas that could use improvement. Now, whenever I see an area that could use an improvement, I give an explanation, give a solution, and present an exercise that could uh, help solve the issue. Now, if I give you an exercise and you're not familiar with any scales, I'm not gonna be able to explain you uh, the way uh, you could use uh, that exercise and apply that exercise to practice a specific techniques because you're gonna try and catch your fingers and figure out what to do with the exercise rather than practice a specific skill or technique. So whenever I see a student who's great at scales, those players are extremely easy to teach and they make the most out of their lesson time. Number two is going to get you prepared for college additions as well as get you through all the academic requirements throughout your study years. Whenever um, you're going to be applying for your college, oftentimes you're going to be required um, to have at least minimal um, knowledge of scales. Uh, oftentimes it's not very extensive, but it's required. Uh, however, whenever you get into university or college, you're going to notice that uh, all the good college, uh, which put a lot of emphasis on their performance majors, uh, they have a technical exam that require a detailed um, application of scales, arpeggios, and etc. So uh, if you're going to be able to be fully prepared before you go to all of those auditions, you have a way greater chance of successfully getting into college and not being um, surprised by the curriculum requirements once you get into the college. Number three is going to help you to get a freelance paid gigs. Whenever you're going to be freelancing um, during your academic years, maybe even pre-academic years and especially post, you're going to notice that often whenever people hire musicians, they're looking for somebody who can uh, do things on the spot, who don't uh, require any rehearsals and uh, who are fantastic at sight reading. Well, guess what? Knowledge of scales is going to be the ultimate tool for your sight reading, ability to do things on the spot and makes you a giggable person. Number four is going to increase your chances of succeeding in job auditions and especially in the later rounds where side reading and learning things quickly is going to be an essential part of the audition. Oftentimes, um, a lot of professional ensembles, they don't have the luxury of rehearsing a lot. So they're always looking for players you can learn fix quickly, you um, don't panic and can uh, side read well and do things on the spot. So whenever you're going to go further into your audition rounds, oftentimes you're going to be asked to do some side reading and uh, even third down the line, you're going to be asked um, to sit in the band, play alongside play new pieces, new program, learning scales is going to make you a capable player, is going to make you somebody who is capable of doing exactly that, doing things quickly, doing things on the spot, being a professional player. 
Number five, it's gonna help you to become a great instructor, a great band director, a great teacher. Uh, giving out Arben Clark to your kids is always a good idea, but I find that it's kind of an easy way out, an easy solution, uh, and not always the most optimal solution when it comes to teaching and being a great mentor. Uh, everyone has different skill set. Everyone has different range, different tone qualities, different speed abilities, and uh, everyone um, requires personalized routine and personalized uh, alterations to the exercises. Your knowledge of scales is going to allow you to customize those exercises not only for your students but also for yourself as a player and help you to customize your personal routine, uh, adjusting it to your personal needs. With that in mind, let's have a look at what you should know for successful job and academic performances. You will definitely need to know all major scales, natural minor scales, harmonic minor scales, melodic minor scales, whole tone scales, chromatic scales, major arpeggios, minor arpeggios, dominant arpeggios, diminished arpeggios, augmented arpeggios, additional variations like thirds, fourths, arpeggio groupings. Now, all of this might seem like a lot to learn, but trust me when I say that it's much more simple than you might initially think. As long as you have correct plan, you know the requirements and you practice correctly. There are two ways you could learn all of these required materials and it's the uh, direct and indirect methods. Now, a direct way of learning would be simply uh, practicing the scale as it's written, whether it's in arpeggio form or scale form or in thirds or fourths or whatever um, the required uh, curriculum is. Direct way of learning is the fastest way to learn everything in a short period of time. However, in my opinion, it's not the most optimal way of learning long term. That's where indirect method might come in handy. If you're a high school player and you have a little bit more of time uh, to learn your scales and you're not pressed by a um, strict deadline or timeline, then uh, I would suggest you learning your scales through a variety of exercises or a variety of techniques. So for example, you could practice your articulation in order to learn your scales. You could practice your flexibility in order to learn arpeggios and you can practice your intonation and everything else in order to learn all the curriculum requirements, which I'm going to share with uh, you in just a minute alongside the direct way of learning. But first, let's break down the suggested requirements by year of study and your major. So in most colleges and universities, you'll find that uh, curriculum requirements for your technical exam will differ um, based on your year of study and whether you're a performance major or non-performance major. Now, some universities might not have um, any scale requirements or any technical exam and you might think you're off the hook. But in reality, if you ever find a university which does not have technical exam, your alarm bell should be ringing because uh, it's usually a huge indicator that the university is not taking the performance program seriously. They're not looking at the performance major uh, seriously enough. So back to the requirements, here's a good guideline to follow. If you're a first year undergraduate performance major, you should know your major scales in two octaves, major arpeggios in two octaves, natural minor scales in two octaves, minor arpeggios in two octaves, chromatic scales in two octaves. If you're a non-performance major, you should be able to play major scales in one octave, major arpeggios in one octave, chromatic scales in one octave. When you hit your second year undergraduate performance major, you should be able to play all the requirements of the first year undergrad, plus major arpeggios in groups of three in two octaves, harmonic minor scales in two octaves, minor arpeggio in groups of three in two octaves, melodic minor scales in two octaves. If you're a second year non-performance major, you should be able to play all the requirements of the first year, plus natural minor scales in one octave, minor arpeggios in one octave. Moving on to the third year undergrad performance major. 
again, you need to know all the requirements of the second year, plus major arpeggios in groups of four and two octaves, minor arpeggios in groups of four and two octaves, whole tone scales in two octaves, all scales in thirds in two octaves. If you are a third year undergraduate non-performance major, you should know all the requirements of a second year, plus harmonic minor scales in one octave, as well as whole tone scales in one octave. Last year of your performance undergraduate degree, you should be able to play all the requirements of a third year, plus all scales in fourths and two octaves, major crap scales, natural minor crap scales, dominant 7th arpeggios in 2 octaves, diminished 7th arpeggios in 2 octaves, augmented 7th arpeggios in 2 octaves. Last year, non-performance undergrad major should uh, be capable of playing um, all the requirements of 3rd year, plus melodic minor scales in 1 octave, dominant 7th arpeggios in 1 octave. All the first year graduate performance students should be capable of playing all the requirements of the undergraduate degree, plus harmonic minor crap scales, diminished seventh arpeggios in groups of three in two octaves, augmented seventh arpeggios in groups of three in two octaves, dominant seventh arpeggios in groups of three in two octaves. The first year graduate non-performance major should be capable of playing all the requirements of the undergraduate non-performance major as well as uh, diminished seven arpeggios in one octave. The second year grad degree student and performance major should uh, be capable uh, to play all the required uh, scales of the first year grad student as well as melodic minor crap scales, diminished seventh arpeggios in groups of four in two octaves, augmented seventh arpeggios in groups of four in two octaves, dominant seventh arpeggios in groups of four in two octaves. Second year non-performance graduate students should be capable of playing the requirements of the first year uh, non-performance graduate student plus augmented seventh arpeggios in one octave. With that in mind, let's move on to the page 114. As I mentioned at the beginning of video, I'm gonna give you a 24 week learning plan in order to optimize your learning process. Now, why specifically 24 weeks? Now, most of the academic years are around 30 week long, usually a little under 30 weeks, um, and that's not including the holiday time. So 24 weeks uh, is always a good timeline to have if you're thinking of being prepared on time for your technical exam during your academic year. So in page 114, you're looking at the first page uh, of a template for the first year undergraduate performance major. Now this book has a suggested learning plan for every single year for both performance and non-performance majors, but for the time purpose, we're gonna focus on a performance major based plan since it's a little bit more extensive. So as you can see, looking at the plan for weeks one to two, you have a table which gives you directions and even suggests you the scales that you should start your learning plan with. 24 weeks will give you two weeks for every single scale, every single arpeggio, and you'll find that it's more than enough time to not only learn your scales, but also get good at it. Let's look at the first column, which is major scales in two octaves. For now, let's pick concert E or treble F sharp major located on page six. Before we start practicing, let's have a look at page four. You're gonna notice that there's a list of suggested optional articulation choices that you should be applying whenever you're practicing. For our first major scales, let's start with all slurred. At all times, feel free to adjust octaves to your comfort. If we looked at the plan direction, it says, play each item with metronome until completed five times without mistakes. Ride tempo down and try to achieve two or more clicks faster the following day. Now, these are the very minimum uh, suggested um, requirements, but you can get creative in, in regards to how many times you're playing this and how many clicks um, you're gonna be uh, increasing every single day and with every single try. So let me give you an example. Thank you. 
Now, if you're not in a rush, you can always extend two week uh, timeline uh, into potentially three weeks, which would be 21 days or even further into four weeks, uh, maybe even five weeks. And talking about not being in a rush, if you don't have to be in a hurry, a cool indirect way would be learning the scales through targeting certain area like finger coordination for example there are a bunch of things you can practice while learning scales and i'm just giving you some samples and food for thought so let's look at the first exercise example located on page seven play this exercise with metronome only press valves with your finger pad or in other words with your finger pillow you don't want to be pressing your valves with the middle of the finger just because it's gonna likely to decrease your ability uh, for coordination as well as increase the range of motion decreasing your ability for speed press valves firmly and quickly for the first three times of each scale play with relaxed fingers on fourth time but don't get sloppy with finger posture the reason why we press very firmly for the first three times is to make sure that your brain locks in the specific combinations you're practicing we don't want to keep our wrists tight, but pressing the valves firmly is going to help you to increase the coordination. If your wrist gets tired, stop and rest for a couple of minutes, then continue. Play everything slurred, we're focusing on fingers here and not the articulation, and do not change the octaves. These octaves are designed to give you tricky and complicated valve combinations, so you can practice uh, and optimize the learning of coordination. Track your speed and make increments on a daily basis until you plateau and move on to next scale. Next on the list are arpeggios located on page 74. Stay consistent with key. Remember, we're learning one major scale in 14 days. Same drill with tempo and setting goals. Start very slowly and gradually build tempo on a daily basis. Thank you. 
pick an indirect way of learning like flexibility exercises from page 79 if you're a little bit more free with your timeline. This particular exercise does not make much sense practicing in a single line, so I would suggest practicing multiple arpeggios at a time and tracking your tempo. Again, just one of the many areas you could target through major arpeggio. You can always choose things like articulation, fingers, airflow, and etc. Next, let's go to minor scales located on page 15. I would highly recommend picking a relative minor just because of the same finger combination. This is going to be a little bit more easy to learn and structure within uh, the timeline. So let's go in this case with concert C sharp minor or uh, D sharp uh, treble minor. Pick different articulation variation, adjust octaves if necessary. <laughs> A cool and direct way of learning would be practicing stamina of your single tongue, located on page 16. Play this exercise with metronome, track speed for your scale, get all the scales up to the same speed before increasing tempo. Listen for consistent front of the attack on every single note. Focus also on minimizing range of motion of tongue movement. Use syllables DA or TA for articulation and I would recommend DA for low brass just because in our low brass range it helps with clarity and airflow. Focus on long vowel of your preferred syllable for consistent airflow. So never cut your ahs and oohs and es and avoid saying d d d d or t t t t rather than da 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 or ta 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 ta. Use preferred octaves. Try to play one line in one breath, otherwise breathe at a middle point. <laughs> Let's move on to our concert C sharp minor arpeggios or treble D sharp uh, minor arpeggios located on page 82. Same learning process applies here. Start slowly, increase your tempo on gradual basis and track your progress. Thank you. 
one of the ways you could practice your minor arpeggios is through practicing intonation. You'll be able to find this exercise in page 88. Feel free to practice one arpeggio or pick multiple different keys. Use drones that are located in folder number two, so this is gonna be available for download again to all of my Patreon subscribers. Try to rely on listening, but use tuning device to double check if not completely confident about your intonation. I would highly recommend recording yourself because perception of sound and intonation is very different whenever you play the instrument in comparison to what you hear from the audience standpoint and what you'll be able to notice whenever you record yourself and listen back. Last item for the first two weeks is going to be located in page 66 and is going to be chromatic scales. In this case, we're going to pick concert E or treble F sharp chromatic scales for consistency purpose, but feel free to pick any starting note as well as articulation variation. Practice slowly and gradually increase tempo every single day. <laughs> Chromatic scales are one of my favorite tools for high and low range practicing. Let's have a look at page 67, exercise number one. The use of metronome is optional here just because sometimes in order to get the quality on the high notes, you might find yourself not capable of tracking the tempo properly. And in this case, it's okay because the purpose here is range practice, not the rhythm and not the speed practice. Take as much time as necessary to fully inhale before playing each bar. Play one bar in one breath if possible, otherwise breathe in the middle. Play everything slurred. Again, we're not focusing on articulation here, the focus point is range. <laughs> So this is how I would schedule a regular day for a first year undergrad performance major for first two weeks. Keep the same structure while altering the keys every two weeks and within 24 weeks you will have completed the required curriculum for the whole year. If you are not in the rush, keep the structure while replacing scales with exercise in that particular key you're trying to learn.
Turns out, not as scary as it appeared at the beginning as long as you have a good plan and you follow it. For time purpose, I'm not gonna go further into detail for every single year requirements at this point, since I'm pretty sure by now you have a pretty good idea how to do it and realized how simple and easy it is as long as you have a plan and you stick to it. As I mentioned, I will make the whole book available in treble, bass clef, as well as tuber rendition for download on my Patreon, so do consider subscribing. In the meantime, I'm gonna be scrolling through complete version and feel free to pause and have a look at it at your convenience. Thank you very much for watching, hopefully you found this video useful and informative. If you're interested in online coaching, I'm gonna leave my contact details down below in the description box, so feel free to get in touch with me. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor by liking this video, sharing it with your friends and leaving a comment down below. Thank you very much and I'll see you very soon in the next educational video.